One, two, one, two. And I did say one, two. Guess who you're talking to? <laughs> it's your boy, Carcino, man. Want to say blessings to all you guys out there. What's up, Eugene, Rod? I see y'all. LM, he's saying finally. Strictly for my opinions, East Side. Everybody who's coming in here, don't forget to hit the like button coming through the door. I appreciate the support, but you got to hit the like button coming through or, you know, they might look at you as a bot and you might not get your notifications next time. I don't know how this stuff is really working. I'm just glad that some of you are getting your notifications. I'm not paying them any mind. <laughs> uh Absolutely. Definitely get the likes up. Um, I was just talking about that in the video previously to this. Now, let's get into it. The 1995 Source Awards. <laughs> A lot of stuff was going on that people didn't know anything about at the 1995 Source Awards. It was so crazy. A lot of things are developing that people didn't even know was going on. People didn't even pay attention to it because it was so much going on at the Source Awards that, first off, the fire department wanted to shut it down. The fire department said, we might have to shut this down. It's too, it's almost like at capacity, and they felt they were over capacity. So they were like, look, we're going to shut this thing down. But it was so many powerful people there, there was no way they're going to shut it down. Here's another thing that you guys didn't know. Mayor Giuliani Yeah, Mayor Giuliani was trying to get this thing removed. And wanted Giuliani wanted this thing destroyed. No. No, Giuliani didn't want, he didn't want anything near, that's too close to where they had the Source Awards in 95, was too close to what he wanted. He wanted New York City to be New York City, no hip hop, no hip hop, no hip hop. He hated hip hop, did not want it around, wanted it removed. So measures were taken. Yeah, certain measures were taken at that time. They wanted to make sure that they had the um, the place secured and any type of thing, fight break out, they were going to shut it down. Here's another thing. Interscope Records, Jimmy Iovine, they didn't want to send Suge Knight and all of those guys to the Source Awards. But they had to. They had to. They were going to be fairly represented. Kim Osario, who's one of the writers there, they and uh, Dave Mays, they all talked and said, look, it's going to be fair. It's going to be parody. It's not going to be an East Coast dominant 
show. We want to show love and respect to everybody. And this is why they agreed to come because they weren't going to come and perform at all. They said, we'll just show up and get an award. But they was like, no, we got to have it. We're going to give you this much time for the entire, because they just wanted Dr. Dre and Snoop. Okay, that was, that was the agreement. You know, Dr. Dre and Snoop. That's what the source is trying to get Dr. Dre and Snoop to. No. Suge x all that. Uh-uh. Nah, nah. Uh-uh. I don't like that. See, everybody at death row, they stars. See? And when you a star, you ain't, mm -mm, nah, all my stars. We all stars. We bigger than all them East Coast artists. All my stars going to be on the stage. So they going to have the death row family. Or they don't get death row at all. So if it wasn't for Suge fighting, you guys wouldn't have all got on stage to perform. Because the source definitely didn't want everybody on the stage. But it was better to have everybody on the stage. They would have not had DJ Quick on the stage. DJ Quick has dissed the source many a times. So you look in the source mag and don't see me. It's because the effing East Coast is the enemy. But I got something that'll serve them right. Nighty night, motherfucker. Sleep tight. <laughs> so... He went on stage, dissed MC8, the whole nine, and he wasn't even signed to death row. So they would have never pulled this off if Suge did not push to have the entire death row family on the stage. So they had a set and a time where we're allowing, allowing all this time for the entire death row family to come out there to be represented. And then they had the same amount of time for Bad Boy. Because Bad Boy and Puffy had their family. And that's what Suge knew. He was like, you going to tell Puffy only thing he could do is bring Big out there? If Puffy got all that time, I want the same amount of time. He ain't asked for more. He wanted parody. Or they weren't coming. And they showed up, just like they said. Death Row came there. They showed up. But here's the problem. Fans weren't allowed in the Source Awards. Let me repeat that right now. Fans were not in the Source Awards. Let me tell you who was in the Source Awards. Everybody's crew and borough. <laughs> so that you guys understand clearly what I'm saying, so you will know. Everybody's <laughs> oh the super chat that's in the description box. So if you want a super chat here, you like these type of videos, support the page and you'll get them. Or if you got cash app, the name is Carcino on the cash app. Y'all know what time it is. Or hit the like button the, with the notification bell and all that stuff. Yeah, do all that. No, this was not fans. These were all borough people who brought. This is They had nobody really monitoring it because the Source Awards was such a small thing just a year prior. It was small. It was like a little community hood thing. A couple of artists from New York. Some might come from L.A. that travel here. You know, and it was love to a certain degree. What they ran into, what they ran into out there is the hood and how the hood feel about the West Coast. A lot of these people boroughs and everybody was repping a borough. And at that time, it was a lot of like a lot of tension going on, even with Biggie. A lot of you don't remember that or don't know y'all. Y'all, it was too quick to get distracted. But because all these people were there and bringing their burrows and repping their guys, these were hood dudes up in the Source Awards. Everybody who's supposed to like say, okay, you such and such, you can only bring this many people. 
such and such, you could only bring this many people. They were way past capacity. People was just like, man, look, we in here. Guys were in there that wasn't supposed to be in there. People was like, yo, I snuck in. I'm like, you snuck in the source of wars? How did you do that? People were there. It was too, it wasn't controlled. It was way too many people. Like too many, just the hood. And they had no respect. None for the West Coast. Because since 1992 or 1990, the West Coast had a surge. Their form of music was like raining. For 1990 to like that night when the Pac era West Coast rap and hip hop was just thriving. They had the award shows and everything. So you had all these bitter people from the East Coast and they burrows and they really let the West Coast have it. So a lot of these dudes is in there. They was real tight face, much attitude. L.A. is laid back. These dudes are not laid back at all. <laughs> they were there. They ain't care. If you want from New York, <laughs> you want from New York, <laughs> you was getting, they booed Jermaine Dupree when he showed up. Jermaine Dupree, he showed up with Diddy. Like, he's had with Diddy and shaking up with Bad Boy and all this. If you ain't from New York, <laughs> East Coast, you were not getting cheered or nothing. There was no fanfare in this. And what people didn't see was all the interactions with everybody else. Bone Thugs and Harmony showed up, and they were so supportive, and they got love. Bone had gotten love. You know, like some people was giving them love that was from the West Coast. They were giving them love, but they had some beef at the time. But that had, when Easy e died, that kind of like died off. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> Just a little bit. Some guys who still kind of like, yeah, I, I, I like y'all movement. But it was just a little bit. Because <laughs> Bones still has some animosity. You know, they was like, look, y'all was, you know, starting some stuff for no reason. And we from Cleveland. And we, they from the Midwest. They don't, they like, clear. it's got to be clear. When you deal with the with the Midwesterners, we're a lot different. We want clarity. We don't do a lot of the wolf, 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 wolf. We want to make sure it is ex exactly what it is, because they know when a when a Midwesterner go all the way, he wants to be clear minded in his mission on what he has to do. He'd be like, okay, this is no misunderstanding. I'm very happy we got this cleared up. Now I know what level this of threat this is. Thank you very much. I got that clarity. Now I know what I got to do. See, we like clarity. That's the difference with Midwesterners. We want to know exactly what the problem is. So when Twister, I mean, uh, not Twister, when uh, Jermaine Dupri showed up with his so-so death and everything else, people don't know if it was not for Puffy Combs. Going in there, Puffy got all the Atlanta people on the map. Puffy went in there and said, listen, we got to give Atlanta they spot. Jermaine got to have his thing, too. Jermaine got to have his artists come out and do their thing. We got to show love to everybody. He was really pushing for it. Not to say Dave Mays and Benzino and all them wasn't going to do it. And Kim and all them, they weren't going to do that. Not to say they wasn't. I'm just saying, Diddy did that. He spoke up for that.
Absolutely. Corrupt got love and I'm rage got love. That's the only people who was in that clique. And Sam Snead got some love. Because he performed with Dre on the stage. Thank you, better wrestling out. Once again, it's the man with the master plan. They call him Sam, man. I think you better recognize. Sam Snead. Sam Snead got love, though. <laughs> Pittsburgh was in the house. <laughs> Rage came on the stage. She had them Afro puffs. That's they girl. I rock rough and stuff with my Afro puff. Rage! They was up for that. <laughs> and Afro puffs was two years old. And she didn't have an album out. <laughs> no, she wasn't a one-hit wonder. The thing about her is that you wondered why they didn't put her album out. <laughs> that was the wonder. Afro Puffs was raining at night. She's the only artist to have a number one smash song and no album. Did you forget the Lady of Rage was lacing Snoop's album? Everything she spit on Snoop's album. On Doggy Style. Go back to listen to that. Rage lit that album up. <laughs> Sorry. Everybody used to think Hurricane G was Lady of Rage at one point. That kind of hurt Hurricane G. A lot of things you didn't know about the Source Awards. <laughs> Here's another thing you didn't know. Salt and Pepper and Spinderella, they were about to fight each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A lot of people didn't know, man. There's a whole lot of stuff going on, man. Y'all don't know what people were going through when this was all going down. He said, they said, you sound better. I sound better? It's all because I have a mind. And I like speaking to my Negro friends. <laughs> no, the, the whole situation changed. Yeah, her album came out in 97. It was the first Death Row album to not even go gold. Because Suge was locked up, Pac was gone, and they just threw it out. No promotion or nothing. It was the first release, like, basically after the Pac situation. Now, at the Source Awards, if you go back and watch the announcement, you'll see Spinderella is not even really talking to Salt and Pepper. She's standing off to the side. 
<laughs> it was a whole lot of stuff going on. You guys didn't know. And they just didn't know about Outcast. A lot of people who was hating, a lot of people was hating on uh a lot of people was hating on uh Outcast, like artists, like Kid and Play, uh the people from Hollis Queens, Run DMC, and all them, they just thought they were weirdos. They looked at the whole Dungeon family as weirdos. People were like, oh, they trying to do Bootsy Collins and all that. They just trying to be Bootsy and they trying to be Parliament, man. Something like that, man. Some weird down soft dudes, man. Like they 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 made sure the Source Awards wanted to give light to everybody. They had nine five South there. And start doing the Tootsie Road, and you start hearing girls going, Ooh, they was doing it. Come on to see your Tootsie Road to the love, to the love. Guys was like this, and Biggie was celebrating. Hey, Biggie was, hey, I'm finna, these dudes making it. I'm rooting them on. And the reason why is because Big was getting a lot of hate from back then, from these other boroughs. They was just really raining down and dissing them. So when Big won, Big went on stage and said, yo, uh, for the whole East Coast, but my borough, this is for the borough, though, Brooklyn. That set that whole section off. <laughs> yeah, they were, they were a lot of dudes in there from Staten Island, Long Island, area and all that it was they were raining down yeah you ain't done so they were way up there in the back like i said wu-tang was so deep deep so the bronx came in in brooklyn and they was like some of them dudes was unified and going crazy oh lm you hit up the cash app all right, let me check it out. He was like, check out the cash app. Phone charging. Uh, I got to tell her. I can't make it. Sorry. It's my grandma's birthday. All right, hold on. Let me go ahead and do this. Oh, thanks. All right, for getting a notification. Yeah, I had to fight them hard just so y'all can get y'all notification. Congratulations to Sean Simpson. He had his baby boy. So there's a lot of stuff going on. Big was getting a lot of hate at the Source Awards, and a lot of people didn't know it. Not Wu-Tang in general, just people who were associated with Wu-Tang because Ray Kwan them what? They wasn't really feeling them. Ray and Ghost and all that, they was cool with them at first, but once Wu-Tang started blowing up, they start seeing them as, man, we can't get our shine, son. Yeah, this dude on that, he want to pop champagne, man. Yeah, man, remember we met him, man? He wasn't on that, man. He's a dirty, grimy dude like us. Man, we were drinking 40s. Man, I'm telling you, man. Bunch of clowns out here, man. You know, <laughs> you know, man. Yeah, then he bit off Nas. Yeah, 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 yeah. You no know, happy go lucky nigga. <laughs> Once they get on, now you want to sip a little champagne every time you see them. You just like, man, look, don't front for me, man. <laughs> don't front for me. <laughs> so 
all of this was going on because Puffy and Big Nim was doing the whole player move. And Craig Mack wasn't even with it either. He didn't want no part of that. He wanted to do his set different from Bad Boy. Because Craig Mack is from a whole different area of New York. And when Craig Mack hit the stage, it was like he was Michael Jackson. Him and his guys that he came with, they were just as rugged too. <laughs> and they they stayed in their own little group. They didn't really consort and mix in with Biggie and his crew and Junior Mafia. They did their whole thing. And this guy was wild. Even when he won the award. Ah! I'm going to say, Greg Mack with Bourbon Diamond, Bourbon Diamond. You won't be around there, yeah. Your rappers do some input, bad play with it, yeah. Yeah. Get a get down, get down, get on down. The man can take you down, down. Get down, boy. So, yeah, rest in peace, Craig Mack, man. Definitely. Yeah, and so the, the East Coast dudes wanted to beat up 95 South. The people that made Tootsie Roll. Come and see your Tootsie Roll. Come and see your Tootsie Roll to the left, to the left, to the side. To the side. I'm like, man, y'all ready to beat them up? <laughs> they just dancing. <laughs> they were mad because the girls was like, ooh, go ahead. You really, you really asking for it right now. You trying to embarrass me like that in front of my borough? <laughs> <laughs> Man, they was mad. They were offended to see them put on that type of show with their shirts off and all of them synchronizing like they haven't said. They were like this. So <laughs> the East Coast, they was like giving dude the, the one guy on the side of the stage was like, yeah, you homeboy. Yeah, you. Well, body. <laughs> he was getting death threats. And he was like, what I do? <laughs> then the girl, she wanted to take a picture with 95 South. The dude sat her down like, sit your butt down. <laughs> and they was, they was in there. At that time, no. Nas was loved at that time. Everybody when Nas was nominated, it shocked the whole audience. They was like, Illmatic. Ooh! <laughs> Dude, the Queens Barrow, who was quiet basically the entire night. Queens dudes move a little different. That's the thing. They move a little different. They ain't really rah, rah, rah like that. They ain't really like that. They kind of sit back, observe the scene. They shysty. Don't get me wrong. Oh, they shysty. But they, they plot. They think. And they stay silent. Then they move. You see? <laughs> yeah, they move. <laughs> they move a little different. They don't really do the rah, rah thing. So at the, at the event... They were waiting for their moment to do the rah-rah. Once they heard Nas get nominated, that's when they was like, oh, Queens Bridge, Queens. That's the only time you heard Queens the entire night. <laughs> then they sat down <laughs> and they was chill. <laughs>
Brooklyn going to let you know they in the house. That's just Brooklyn. The Bronx, they move different. You know, they, the Bronx, you ain't got an ax. It's the Bronx in the house. You could look at them and say, the Bronx is here. <laughs> they go, how you know he from? The Bronx is here. That's the Bronx. <laughs> That's the Bronx. <laughs> you don't have to ask, is the Bronx in the house when they show up? You know the Bronx is in the house. <laughs> yeah, he'd be like, who let the Bronx in here? <laughs> <laughs> you know when the Bronx is in the house. Don't even ask. No questions. Well, see, Queens is broken up in different sections, and a lot of sections don't deal with anybody. It's just like any other neighborhood, like in Chicago on the south side. Y'all be like, yeah, you're from the south side. There's plenty areas in the south side that don't deal with each other. Hollis. And Southside Jamaica Queens, those two don't normally mix. <laughs> they don't. St. Albans, Queens, that's kind of like linked a little bit with Hollis a little bit. They don't really deal with them too much. They kind of had their own little thing over there. Because St. Albans is like, where like LL's from, um, he's from Farmers Boulevard, but in St. Albans, Queens, that's mostly old folks' homes. Like old people live there and ain't, ain't no real hip hop artists and stuff like that was in that area. That, that was like a reserved area of homes for like families. It was, it was like no buildings or nothing like that. Oh, Harlem, you know Harlem in the house. They the guys who can't go a week without a haircut. Those the guys, <laughs> those the guys that's going to be pristine. They can iron clothes better than a woman. They got the ironing board up 24-7. <laughs> no, nah, babe, uh-uh. No, 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 no. Don't, don't put starch on that. That's ultra suede. What you mm -mm, let me show you how to set the temperature. What you do, just plug the iron up and just put it on your clothes. You gotta do why you think all these settings is up here for? Uh -uh. So you put the steam over the shirt and you press the button. So you gotta steam it out, babe. You gotta steam it out. <laughs> that's that, that's hollow, baby. They gonna be fly. Yeah, the East Coast was there, but like I told you, there's a lot of things going on. So in the back of the Source Awards, the brat was getting toe up. And she had a drinking problem back then. And a lot of people didn't realize that or didn't know that it was, it was like a problem. They just like, well, she get toe up. She was drinking like way too much, man. The brat was, she throw down some liquor. And she drinks, she was drinking too much. And she was getting toe up with Biggie and them in the back, hanging out with Big and Junior Mafia, Lil' Kim. They all in the back getting toe down. So when they went out there and went to her seat, she was drinking still. So... Let me tell her things. Tomorrow we'll hang out. Yeah, we'll hang out tomorrow. Now, I got to get ready to...
for her, my grandmother's thing. She's having a party today. She loves gifts. So anyhow, back to the situation at hand. We're sitting there watching this whole thing go down to Brad getting drunk. And the Brad goes on stage. And the Brad does her set. She's getting ready to go on stage. The Brad start rapping. She did her remix. They had just did a remix for I'm going to give it to you. That's what it was. I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give it to you. Word up. Hey, for real though. The remix I like. I didn't like the original. I'm going to give it to you. So JD's out there and they performing the song together and everything else. And at first, when he was like, You don't want the executive producer all in the videos, everybody did think it was Jermaine Dupree. <laughs> <laughs> Until Puff came out there and owned up to it. Yeah, I was going to get to that. So the brat performed, right? So when the brat performed, when she did her set, and everybody's just sitting there. Biggie is cheering on the whole East Coast. She started going up and down the aisle. She's going past all them boroughs, and they like this. They are dead silent. They didn't want to talk, and they was like, come on, get up. I don't know, Brad. They don't want to get up. She was like, man, I don't give a uck. And they was like, what? Woo! And she was flicking them off and everything, giving them the finger. She was drunk. So when she came back out there, some people was talking to her like, yeah, what? What? Yeah, they were, <laughs> yeah, they were ready to set it off. And she was like, she's south side, Chicago, west side. You know, <laughs> that west side Chicago <laughs> <you> <laughs> You see, she went to jail for. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. So now Outcast wins. And they got boo from the jump. I think that started it. <laughs> that started the whole award show. Boom! Best new artist uh, over East Coast rapper. Boom! Oh my God! Are you kidding? You give some South dudes outcast, even kid from Kid Playlist. Outcast, like who are they? It's like best new artists. <laughs> they went hard. So in the back. They booing outcasts and all this, and man, they felt so disrespected. Y'all don't even realize outcasts wasn't finna even do their song at all. They wasn't. They like, we not doing our records. We finna do, they did Cool Breeze. Cool Breeze was the champ. He was that artist. And Cool, what you guys didn't know. And at the Source Awards, when Cool Breeze came out, and everybody like, man, who is this? And Cool, that song was dope. Brother Man, <clears throat> the Dungeon Family. So what, what they don't, what y'all don't realize is that Cool Breeze don't have to rap. <laughs> he didn't have to rap. You know anything? Everybody like, man, what's up with Cool Breeze? Man, what happened? 
Breeze didn't have to rap. <laughs> Listen, Cool Breeze didn't have to rap. <laughs> Cool Breeze, yeah, Cool Breeze could do some things. <laughs> you know, I'm like, look, Breeze was that guy. You know, he was, um, what's that thing? The guy that had the song Tonka. He was him. He was a street pharmaceutical distributor and and was very good at it. And so he was trying to make it in the rap game like his boys outbreak, outcast. Cool Breeze was no joke. So when Cool Breeze saw all the hate and all the dudes was coming his way, Breeze was like, I might have to pop somebody in New York. <laughs> <laughs> Breeze is like, look, if this thing go left, I'm dropping a couple of dudes before we get up out of here. Man, I'm going to buzz this dude here to the white meat, man. He keep talking to me that way. Man, don't look, man. We from the South, man. Don't, don't disrespect. South is all about respect. Don't disrespect me. That's the whole South's mentality. So New York is all about disrespect. <laughs> and they all they did was ooze it. And they ooze disrespect, staring them out, staring them down. And the dude had the toothpick in his mouth. Like, <laughs> staring at man Breeze. <laughs> Breeze like, look, <laughs> I don't even want to be here. I don't even want to be here right now. I don't want to go to no after parties. I don't want to do none of that. I want to get back to the South. Because if I stay here, I might get arrested. <laughs> nah, Breeze is going to hurt somebody. For real, Breeze is going to hurt. Goody Mob, but them ain't them dudes y'all want to mess with. <laughs> like, they are not playing no games. Them dudes that came with Outcast, they are all business. But it put the South on the map. Because what you saw on TV, it was just another award show. It was focused on the Suge and Pac and my death row family riding on both sides. Tell Pac, keep his guys up. We riding with him. See, when all that was going on, that took all the attention away from everything else. And what you didn't know and didn't see was that Andre getting on that microphone saying the South got something to say. All these people that they closed minded, you got a demo tape, they ain't trying to hear it. South got something to say. When he made that statement, people in the West Coast felt that. People in the Midwest felt that. People down South felt that. They felt that, bro. And if y'all feel this video, make sure you click the link in the description box, hit up that stream lab, and donate to the page. Definitely do that. And definitely hit up the Cash App if you can't do stream lab. Some people can't do it. He said, I really miss those truth behind videos. He's like, do the truth between Big Eye and Rockefeller deal. And the truth behind Tupac and Master P. I think I did Pac and Master P. You said Big I and Rockefeller. Yeah, I don't know if that's a typo. Or you mean Biggie and the Rockefeller thing? I've done all that. You got to go check the playlist. No, there is a playlist, dude. Or is that Big L? Oh, I'm sorry, that's Big L. I think he, I think that's what he's trying to say, Big L. Big L and a Rockefeller deal. I think I did that already, but I'll check. But thanks for your donation.
I believe I did. I'm normally very good at predicting what I've done. Let me see. Master P. Oh, that's the wrong. Sorry about that. Okay, let's see what's going on now. Since y'all say I didn't talk about it. Man, he's in like 17 of my videos. I got the colonel in 17 of them. Let me see. There's the truth behind Master P and the No Limit Soldiers beating up a DJ. Okay, we got that one. Uh, let me see. Hmm. I don't see it, but I know I've done it. Well, we'll do it again. Hey, we gonna do it again. We gonna, we gonna, we gonna do it again. Yep. So if you donate, or you can hit the cash up. The name is Carcino on the cash app. Yep, yep, yep. Well, that's what people do, you know. They make moves. No, I <laughs> told you, it was crazy. So they wanted to definitely start something and set something off. They wanted to let people know they were there. That award show did a lot of damage to the East Coast and set the stage for Atlanta to become a melting pot for music. That award show set it up, man, because after that, it was never the same. It was a great award show. Great award show. Probably the best we've seen, especially for hip hop. And ever since then, like when they brought the Source Awards back and they had all the big budget and the money, it was great when they brought it back that first year. And they brought it to the West Coast for the first time. And it was epic. Well, you got to decide on which one it was. I don't uh, I know the year he went there and Jay-Z was scared to show up. That was right after TakeOver. <laughs> and when the Source Awards came around, they was like, Jay, are you coming? Nope. <laughs> and then they lied and tried to make a video like, Jay-Z was there. Look, this is when I'm like, no, he was not there that year. <laughs> 
That was the one time he only did the Source Awards once. He was never going to a Source Awards. Jay was terrified to be at a, store, a Source Awards. In 95, he wasn't invited. <laughs> and any year after that, he did not want to attend. He did the intro. That's when they was introing and they were promoting Memphis Bleak album. And they had uh, a meal on stage and that's when she was like on her way out. And then they was finna do the, can I get a what, what? And they cut her mic and they went back to Jay-Z. I knew, I thought that was something wrong with the audio. That was planned. Jay was Jay set that up. <laughs> but that's a whole nother thing down the road. But yeah, they set that up for her mic to get cut. She was finna talk and start rapping and singing her part. And it just cut. It went back down to Jay. It's a hard knock life for us. It's a hard knock life for us. I'm like, what in the world? I'm like, they just cut her mic. And she was gone right after that. I'm like, oh, yeah, there was a problem. They might have it on YouTube. Because that was the only time Jay performed. It was to open the show. And I think it was probably a pre-taped recording. Because I don't think Jay was going to be there. Jay did not want to be in a situation with a whole bunch of rappers around him that from different areas he didn't know. Oh, yeah. Shouts out to Young Mouth for show. <laughs> Always, man. Stand up dude, writer. That's something that needs to be known. Writer, rapper, artist. <laughs> Gotta give him his respect, man. Godzilla. As I told y'all, his double CD was the last CD I bought for my buddy before he died. I was always by his and mine. The last. CD I ever bought it. That was it. Yuck mouth. Because it was a monster. <laughs> hey, can't lie. To that. Hey, that was a monster. That's 99. April of 99, buddy. April of 99. So if you tell Yuck mouth that, Y'all see him on his live channel. Tell him that. That was the last CD I bought for my buddy. Because I was on the Nas tour for the I Am promotional run. We was doing all the street team stuff for Nas. Nah, that wasn't it. Last album I got for him was Young Mouth. I don't think that was it. It was a double CD that came out. I think that was in 99. I think that came out in April of 99. Because I know I got him Nas too. Nas was one of them, but I think the that one was the last one I ever got him. Yeah, it was a double CD. That that I do know is a double CD. Well, I don't know. I got it in April of 99. <laughs> that was the last one I got him. It's a double CD. I I gave him the Nas one because we was doing the uh 
Oh, that that CD was a monster. That CD was a straight monster. Yeah, and then I, I know in April I gave him the Nas album, the I Am. I was doing all the street team stuff. I had all my Nas stuff, dog. And this is the 30th anniversary of I Am. I mean, the 20-year anniversary. Did I say 30? Jeez. No, so my because my buddy's been dead 20 years now. 20 years. As crazy as that sounds, it's been 20 years. It felt like a shock just to even say that. Yeah, well, these are the times, man, when things change. Oh, it was crazy back in the days. Because that's what drove everybody to towards the Midwest. Bone Thugs and Harmony put the Midwest at the at its biggest point. Then you start seeing Twister and Do or Die, and everybody else started to come up, and the, they started getting mainstream attention. When before Midwest rap at that time, really the brat was all we really had. So that whole Source Award put a lot of stuff. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. We all try to do the best we can, man. I mean. Oh, thanks, Chaz. Chaz just sent the Cash App donation. Don't forget, support the page. Hit the Cash App up. The name Carcino on there. Yeah, I mean... Times has always been crazy like that. Shout out to Chuck Mo and Chuck Strange. Oh, my little ex. You want to see a picture of my ex? That's my little ex. That's her in a bathing suit. This from the old phone, too. This from the old, old, old phone. That's my old, 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 old phone. Guys, you guys have no idea how old that phone is. That's like 12, 13 years ago. Like when camera phones first came out. I don't know where she at now.
And then, you know, Sino moved up. Sino moved up the ladder. <laughs> escorts. Yes, I escorted them. <laughs> I escorted them to a lot of places. That's funny. People know the quality of my videos and sit up there and ask me, was that Photoshop? <laughs> Do you think I know how to Photoshop? <laughs> I'll be like, where is it located? What this Photoshop? <laughs> I gotta go there and get something done. No, it's it's what it's called. It's called Photoshop. It's not an pl actual place you go. It's not a store. I mean, oh, I don't know. They said Photoshop. <laughs> So that's that source awards has got to be one of the probably one of the biggest and it would it would probably go down in history as the best but it also changed the spectrum. It changed the way everything was going as far as hip hop. The East Coast lost a lot that night. By the way they were treated and the way they disrespected other like the South and everybody else they all had a foul taste in their mouth. For the East Coast. See, I remember these days. See, those are my era. Those are my days of era. Man, I don't know what happened. With the high haircut. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's my ex, my other ex, Trisha Grant. <laughs> Trisha Grant. Oh my God. That's like 94. This is my girl from 94. Trisha Grant. My 94 girl.
Rest in peace to my boy. Oh, wow. This is some wild stuff I'm looking at here. Yeah, this is blowing my mind. As you can see, Big Wu-Tang Medallion. Your boy Sino was wildin'. Crazy Puerto Rican chicks. Rockin' the woo wear. Well, woo wear wasn't out in 91, so. Oh, man. Say no. Dressed up for the fight. Get it right. <laughs> This the night I almost got destroyed in Vegas. I'm decked out in red and black, all red and black on the Vegas Strip. Red and black on the Vegas Strip. My big Wu Tang machetes. <laughs> yeah, my buddy was driving the the Back to the Future car. Blew all that money on it. Oh man, this one it was going down. Man, this is bringing back a lot of memory. Sino with the woo foo boo on.
at Six Flags with the silent assassin. That dude under the mask, buddy, you don't want to see him. <laughs> he going to bring the havoc. Look at that. Cino had all the ladies. All the ladies say, ow. I was Cino Park, baby. Man, all of this is crazy, man. Me and my twin brother, Twister. I don't think a lot of people seen this photo. They was like, y'all look like brothers. Uh, I don't really like showing this ex. She got on my nerves. Man, this brings back a lot of memories. All my friends I lost. All the great times. But I'll never forget that Source Award. Thank you, guys. Hopefully, you guys donated to the Cash App. This has been a lot of fun. They call me Arnold who? I don't know who called me that. Y'all didn't know Sino was a ninja though. Slice and dice you up. So he knows a ninja boy. What I tell you? Thought I was lying. Cino so was a ninja. Dun, dun, dun. 
I'll slice you up with that sword. You see that katana sitting in my lap? I'll take that katana out and slice you up. I'll be walking down the street pointing that side of the sword at people. Look, man, I told you. LeBron's a bum. And if you got something else to say, <laughs> Dang. Thanks, I will elude. I did see you, you do when you do. I'll uh, hit your cash up. up. Sino with the Brayton mask. When I put on the Brayton mask, you better look out. Brayton. I'm going to go full Brayton on you. See my cyclone blade? Great. Happy 4th of July, partner. <laughs> and before you get mad, I got them on both, red and blue. I'm going to ride my horse down. A nah. I could have sworn that song. That song makes no sense, but little kids love it. Man, y'all got me over here nostalgic for the rest of this whole video. I'm like, my goodness.
I'm the feeling of a million that's spending a hundred grand. Wow, Malika. One of the rare photos I have of her. You ever had a girlfriend who didn't like to take pictures? That was Malika. The arrow. Girls, girls, girls. Word to the bird, I ain't never take them fur shopping. <laughs> Keith Thurman, who thinks he's a Hindu now. That's why you got knocked out, Keith. 